welcome to Storytime. I am your Storytime host, Miss Nikki. Today's read aloud is titled The Five O'Clock Band and it is written by Troy Andrews, also known as Trombone Shorty. Mr. Andrews is a Grammy-nominated musician and if you like jazz music, you definitely need to check him out. This story takes place in New Orleans, where the author was born. He takes us on a tour around his neighborhood, and along the way, Shorty meets different people who give him advice on what it means to be a musician, a leader, and a friend. Are you ready to travel to New Orleans with me? Let's go. The Five O'Clock Band, words by Troy Trombone Shorty, Andrews, with Bill Taylor and illustrated by Brian Collier. Everyone's hometown is special. It's the place that helps you grow into the person you'll become. For one little boy called Shorty, his hometown roots were very important. He was from New Orleans and in this city, there are sounds and tastes and celebrations unlike any other place in the world. Many even call it magical. The city showed Shorty how to see the world and its people helped him become the person he was destined to be. Shorty liked to play music. In fact, he was in a band. They called themselves the Five O'Clock Band because that was the time they started playing every afternoon after school and homework were finished. The band lived in a lively neighborhood called Treme. The five o'clock band would parade through the streets of Treme down to Jackson Square in the center of town and back around, just like all the older musicians did. They played for the people for rounds of applause and sometimes they even got tips. But one day, Shorty was practicing his trombone and got so lost in his own music that he forgot to meet the five o'clock band at their regular time. Shorty ran to Jackson Square, trombone in hand, but his bandmates had already left. He had missed their performance and parade and he knew he had let them down. One day, I want to be the band leader, but how can that happen if I can't even get to the show on time? Shorty thought. Shorty walked through the neighborhood, around the large square in the French Quarter where musicians gathered. He smelled delicious gumbo and jambalaya in the air and heard the sounds of other musicians echoing through the streets. But Shorty kept his head down. Not even the sounds of the brass instruments could cheer him up. Until suddenly, he heard a booming voice cry out, Shorty, where are you at? Shorty looked up to see Tuba Trimme. He was a giant of a man, but he was as sweet as pecan pie and the sounds that floated out from his horn were even tastier. Tuba and his band had been playing in the quarter for as long as Shorty could remember, and they played songs that were over 100 years old. Where you at, Tuba? Shorty called back, feeling down. Looks like you've got the blues, little man. Tuba Treme had noticed Shorty's sad face. I missed the five o'clock band and I don't know where they've gone. I'm afraid I won't have what it takes to be a real band leader if I can't even show up on time. Tuba Treme placed his giant horn to his lips. The first notes of when the saints go marching in tickled Shorty's ears. Like so many other New Orleans musicians, Shorty had learned how to play his horn with this tune. Pride swelled in Shorty's chest as he and Tuba played 
the same notes together that Louis Armstrong had played many years before them in these same city streets. Tradition, Tuba Treme said, every band leader needs to know where music came from in order to move it forward. If you understand tradition and you keep it alive, you will be a great band leader. Thanks, Tuba, Shoshi said as he waved goodbye. He hoped to be able to play just like Tuba Treme one day. Shoshi continued walking through the quarter along the banks of the Mississippi River. A steamboat floated alongside him and the steam whistle sounded. He thought about how many musicians had played on that river, even Louis Armstrong. Shoshi blew his horn back to the steamboat and smiled. His growling stomach led him back toward home, but the scent of red beans and rice made him stop in his tracks. Where you at, Shoshi? Queen Lola called out the window of her restaurant. Shoshi was still feeling defeated, but no one could refuse a meal from Lola. The Creole queen, one of the best chefs in New Orleans, if not the world. Where you at, Queen Lola? Shoshi answered as he opened the door. Queen Lola served him a heaping plate of red beans and rice, along with andouille sausage, collard greens, and okra with tomatoes. She had been making this dish for over 50 years, treating everyone who came through her door like family, even Martha Luther King Jr. As Shorty dug in, he asked Queen Lola the question that was weighing on his heart. I let my band down today, but I want to be a great band leader and make amazing music. Just like you make amazing meals in your kitchen every day. How do you do it? Queen Lola smiled wide. Love, she said. There's love in my food because I love every dish I make. It's my special sauce. As long as you love what you do, you will always be a success. I don't love anything more than playing music, but this meal sure is close. Thank you, Queen Lola, Shoshi said. Come by anytime, Shorty, she said. Why don't you head back out and see if you can find your band? Shorty felt a little better now that his belly was full, but he knew he still had more to learn. As he walked towards Trume, looking for his band, he heard the rumbling of drums in the distance. It sounded like glorious thunder. As he turned the corner, he stood face to face with the most majestic person he'd ever seen. We are Indians. A chant pierced through the warm, swampy air. It was the chief of the neighborhood, Mardi Gras Indian tribe. Big Chief and his drummers chanted as they pounded out a rhythm. We are Indians, Indians, Indians of the nation, the whole wild creation. Shoshi knew this song was a prayer that the Mardi Gras Indians sang before they marched down the streets. They believed the song would protect them on their journey as they went through the city looking for other tribes. Mardi Gras Indians only exist in New Orleans. They are a special group sacred to the city. Where you at, Shorty? Big Chief asked as his group slowed their drumming. Where you at, Big Chief? Shoshi hollered back. You and the tribe sound amazing. I'm actually looking for my group, the Five O'Clock Band. But I need to know, what does it take to be the Big Chief? Big Chief picked up his tambourine and shook it proudly as he looked up to the sky. Dedication, he said. Each year, all the Indians make new suits hand-sewn from scratch. It takes a lot of time and patience, but when we hit the streets, 
it's worth it. We are the soul of Mardi Gras. Shoshi noticed how Big Chief's suit shimmered in the light. He thought about how important it was for him to practice his craft every day in order to carry the honor of being a band leader. Suddenly, Shoshi heard the familiar melody of a brass band in the distance and ran toward it. He knew those sounds could only come from the five o'clock band, and there were his friends parading down the avenue toward him. Where you at? The five o'clock band sang. Where you at? Shoshi answered. I'm sorry I wasn't there for you guys today. I promise I'll never let you down again, Shoshi said. But I learned that we have all the ingredients we need for success. We have dedication. We honor tradition. And most of all, we play with love. Now I know what it takes to lead. Why don't you start us off and take the lead right now, Shoddy? One of the boys said. Shoddy raised his horn to his lips, stepped out in front of the band and played the opening notes of When the Saints Go Marching In. As the five o'clock band paraded home to Tremaine, they waved at the friends and neighbors who clapped their hands and danced in the step behind them. questions for you. What do you think is the most important piece of advice Shorty received? Two, why do you think that? And three, what is the most important piece of advice you've received? Thank you for listening. Until next time, take care.